Hey buddy, welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skid Viz. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use Houdini and Pro Builder together to build your levels. You can use the great tricks we've been using in Houdini to get your levels started, and then use Pro Builder to refine and improve the work you've started. So we will go ahead and do that, but first, hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep making videos. Uh, and now, without further ado, let's do this. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Uh, we've got this 30 by 30 image that I created. Hopefully you can tell it's a bird. Um, and what we're gonna do, as usual, if you've been watching this series, uh, we're gonna turn this into a map. We're only interested in the blue area. So I've color coded this, this specific blue, uh, and then we'll use Houdini to parse this file and turn it into a level for us. So now that we have that saved to the desktop, we'll just jump into Houdini here and I will go ahead and create a new geo. So let's go ahead and open up a geometry here. Just drop that anywhere. I'm gonna rename this to Mapper and go into that. And then we will drop the WFC Initialize Grid. And this is of course part of the tools, uh, the lab tools. So if you don't have that installed, you'll need to get that in your Houdini. So we'll drop that right there. And what this will do is it'll give us this grid here that we can uh, drop an image onto. So we'll go ahead and click on From Texture and go into our file system on my desktop there is fine and find that bird map. And boom, there you can see we have the bird overlaid on this grid. Now we need to isolate the colors and we'll do that as we've done in the other videos. So if you haven't watched those, you might wanna do that. We're gonna use a partition. So tab P-A-R-T, shift enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to break the colors into groups. Um, so we need to give it a, a naming format for those uh, groups. So we'll just type CD plus and then the little tilde thing here. And now we're gonna call a method to return an integer. And we're gonna pick the attribute color dot R. We're gonna multiply that by 255 so we get a, a nice number related to the color in Photoshop. Uh, we'll end that tilde and put an underscore there. And just do the same for G and B. So if we go ahead and look right now in our geometry spreadsheet and scroll over to the right, you won't see anything because I forget to keep changing this to points. And now that that's points, uh, now you can see there's three groups. There's 000, which is black. There's this 56 something or other, which is blue. And there's this 255, 255, 255, which is the uh, white, of course. So that's going great. And we wanna get rid of anything except for the blue. So we're going to drop a blast node. So tab BLAST, shift enter. That's gonna get rid of everything. We want to select the blue one. And then we want to say delete non-selected. And what that's going to do right now, it's, uh, it's keeping the white one. We wanna get rid of that and just set it to delete non-selected which will get rid of everything but the blue. So now you can see we have that outline of the ground area alone. We don't have the outline anymore. We don't have the, the black space, just the blue area remains. So what we'll wanna do now is copy a grid to each one of those points. So we'll go ahead and create a grid, shift G, shift G R I D. Uh, so we got this grid here. And then we'll use a copy to points to copy it to the points that we have here for this blast node. So we'll do copy to points. Cool, cool, cool. And then we'll just connect the blast on this side and connect the grid on this side and highlight that. And what a mess we have, right? So we'll have to go ahead and just resize down our grid. So we want uh, just two rows and two columns and we want them all to be one apart. And there we go, now we have our bird made out of grids. Now the problem with this is they're all individual grids, so if you were to select them, you'll see that they uh, 
they highlight one at a time they're all individual grids so the next thing we want to do is uh, fuse these so that it's just one big sheet instead of a bunch of little uh, grids so we'll do that by dropping a fuse node so we'll just click on this and tab FUSE shift enter and now all of these should be just one big object there so that will help us a lot later so we're done with that part uh, the next thing we want to do is turn this into a level so we'll click on this fuse node and bring in a poly extrude and I didn't shift click but that's fine so we'll just drag that into this and then we will raise this up we'll set a distance of maybe two yeah and so that gives us some height now we have ourselves a uh, I'm gonna set that to three why not let's uh let's see what happens so we've set that to three and now we can go ahead and export this into unity but before we do we need to do a couple more things so I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab and bring in a transform shift enter and basically what's gonna happen is this is gonna be really tiny in uh, unity because of course it's 30 by 30 right so we'll go ahead into the scale and just scale that up 100 right that's gonna make it super big but uh, that's what we need so we'll set that to 100 and then just to be on the consistent side we'll throw an output node in here shift enter and now we're done right um, but we still have to turn this into an asset in HDA so hopefully you've watched my other videos because I do this in every other video so We'll go ahead and hit up the up key and then right click on this create a digital asset and the windows on my other screen for some reason and i'm going to go ahead and give this a name i will call it uh well we'll leave it as mapper why not and then we'll save it in uh well, i'm gonna call this bird bird map how about that bird map no i'll call it image mapper yeah that's a good one and then I've got a project already somewhere in here with new Unity project assets. And I will throw this in here in my assets folder, hit accept, destroy spare parameters. And now I want to give it some properties that I can change. So I'm going to just collapse all these right quick, select all of these and make them invisible. And then go back into my mapper and I want to basically be able to change the file. So I'll drop, drag and drop this texture field into this. And I'll just call this file name. Cool. And then is there anything else I want to change dynamically? Maybe we'll want to select the color manually. So we can drag this into here also. So this is the color group. Um, yeah and then is there anything else maybe I want to change the height of the ceiling so I will grab that distance and just call it ceiling height great um, and that should be enough so we will hit apply hit accept and that is that um, Click this, make sure to save my asset again, just in case it didn't. And now we go back into Unity or go into Unity. I haven't been here yet today. But as usual, I have this uh, empty project, which has a controllable character, that's Link. Um, the things I have installed on this project, as usual, are Game Creator, so I can have a um, easy way to create a character and move them around. I've got the Houdini engine, which you need to have installed to use Houdini in Unity. And this time around, of course, I have installed Pro Builder. Uh, all of these things you can get off the Asset Store, the package manager, except for Houdini engine, it comes with Houdini. Um, you can get it off the pack package manager or the Asset Store, but it's not gonna be up to date with your version of Houdini. So it's best to just get it from Houdini. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, Procreate and everything installed. Um, or not Procreate, uh, Pro Builder, so we can get uh, rolling. 
So we'll go ahead and bring in that digital asset that we just created. We can do it many ways. Um, it's right here, it's called Image Mapper. So we'll just drag it into the scene and that will create, uh, oh, we did forget one thing there, didn't we? Forgot to put the bottom of the image. So I'll go ahead and delete that. We'll go back into Houdini and come back into this area here where we do a poly extrude um, and that's this output back, right? We're, we're outputting the front, um, but we're not putting the bottom of it. So as you can see, it's hollow on the bottom. So we wanna go ahead and select output back there and that fixes that issue. So now we can go ahead and re-export this and fixing that issue. So we'll save the image mapper again, go back in here and try that one more time. We'll just drag this into the scene. And now of course our bird has a front and a back. Cool. So let's see where our player is in all this. All right, cool. So he's all the way down there. This is all the way up there. Okay, it's just very big. It's bigger than I thought. Um, so, okay, let's, uh, let's figure this out. First thing we'll need to do is convert this into a Pro Builder object. So we'll go into this image mapper folder or item uh, game object and go to the, the one that's beneath it and that'll be the actual model uh, that we've exported. So in Pro Builder, there's this little icon here that says Pro Builderize. And what that does, as the name implies, is it turns it into a Pro Builder object. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now you can see, we can see all of the different cells in the, in the mesh. Um, and we can go ahead here and click this to flip the normals. And that's basically gonna invert the normals and turn the walls into inside walls as opposed to outside walls. So we'll be able to see inside it. So go ahead and click that. Now you can see inside of this. Now it doesn't have a mesh collider or any collider of any sort. So if we were to start playing right now, we would just fall through the floor. So we go into this and just add a mesh collider. And then assuming that our player is in a good place, when I hit play, we will be able to run around inside of our bird. As you can see, um, it's working, but for some reason our map is just way too big. I think I shouldn't have scaled it up to um, 100. So let's go back into Houdini and change that transform. Let's just go ahead and kill it for now. I, I know I'm supposed to scale it, but I don't remember what the number is supposed to be exactly. So we'll just set it back to one and see what happens when we rebuild. Okay, so now we've got a tiny level and we've got a tiny link. So I think I just needed to scale that up to like two or something. I don't know why I went with 100. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead in here and scale everything up. That's not the tab button. Tap, tap, tab. So now it's twice as big as the model. And so we will go ahead and run through that process again, because every time you hit rebuild, it rebuilds that mesh. So you have to come back in here and hit the Pro Builderize button, flip those normals, and add a mesh collider every time. So be very careful with that rebuild button. And now we can hit play and everything will be fine. So you can see we can walk around and explore our bird level just fine. Now, the beauty of Pro Builder, of course, is that you can modify your levels. So let's say you're playing it and you're like, well, I want this big area here. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and flip these normals back the way they were. Uh, go back to this one. Let's flip these so we can see the outside, right? So let's look at this bird here. And we'll be like, okay, well, this area here, maybe I want that to, to go up and be a higher ceiling. So we'll click on this button here to select faces. 
And then we can just uh, click and drag to select a bunch of faces or, you know, shift click to select a bunch of faces. And then you can just, uh, let's let me check that one. And you can you can just drag this up and this, that's gonna distort the, the ceiling there. If that's what you want, you can. Or you can, of course, you know, use shift drag to uh, extrude it. And then, of course, you can use the rescale button here and then shift that to create that effect. And then switch back to this and shift drag back up to that. And you can see we're creating some really cool stuff here. So um, it's a little off center. All right. Good enough for now. Uh, and let's say you want to drag the beak out, right? So you can do the same thing. Just click on the beak and drag it out. Let's say you want to make it more beak-like, so you want to scale it, right? So we can go ahead and do that as well. Just scale it on whichever axis you want. And then we can do, all right, well, this is a nice level, but what if it had like a trap door, right? So we'll come over here to this area here in the talon and we'll do this just that. We'll click this piece here, this face, and we'll shift click to create a new uh, section there. And then we'll just go to the bottom and click on that and shift drag to make that go down and shift drag again to create another partition there and then go to the back side of it and keep doing this right we'll just keep extending this out uh, maybe we want the whole thing to move upwards right and then move back out and then go back down well this isn't this isn't a, a tutorial on Pro Builder, but you can do all these great things uh, with a map that you created in Houdini. And that will save you a bunch of time when you want to just flesh out your map. And of course, you can immediately, like we created this into a digital asset. So if I wanted to change this map into a completely different image, I can go to my desktop, find this image of a cat, and click open. And just like that, the level is now a cat. Uh, of course, we'll have to do the same stuff again. We'll have to come in here and click on the convert to pro builderize thingy to pro builderize the cat. We'll have to flip the normals and add the mesh collider. And just like that, when we click on play, now we are inside of the cat. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. So as you can see, this was pretty basic. We've got our really simple image that we can draw in Photoshop or whatever image processor we want to create a rough outline of our level. And then we bring it into Houdini and just stretch that up and turn it into a model, bring that into, um, turn it into a digital asset. That way we can modify it on the fly uh, and then bring that into Unity and pro builderize it and do whatever we want to it. We can expand it and change it and smooth it out and texture it and do all that wonderful stuff that we can do with pro builder uh, with the great benefits that we get from using Houdini. So I hope you found this helpful. I had to do this out of necessity uh, because the I'm making a virtual reality game for the Oculus Quest which has the processing power of a potato apparently. So all of my fancy models that I was using were really dragging the frame rate down um, and I needed to find a quicker way to modify my levels and Pro Builder is great for that. So um, I hope this helps you out the way it's helping me out. And if so, please do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button so I can keep making more of these videos and we can keep making games. Make sure to join my Discord so maybe you can help me with my game by helping me uh, figure out some maps. How cool is that? Anyways, thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.